Just took a beating and his whole body was broke for us. Broke for us. Do it, we know who the world was broke for. Abraham had it, matter of fact, that's what he's known for. Faith, y'all, do it, we were saved by grace. If you got it, we can sing it by the way you run a race. Yeah, that means we can see it on your face. If the faith don't act, then it really ain't faith. And that really ain't the case, cause faith ain't faith. Did I have you trying to act out the word every day? Every Christian has faith, it's a gift, we should use it. Some distort the view of it, and others just abuse it. It can be irrational and make it give your life up. This is for the cause of Christ and not to get a nice truck. Right, just look, you know you gotta trust God when it seems hard, man. Faith is a must, dog. You gotta leave, leave with it. are listening to For A More Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Hello, everyone. I am your old, your podcast host, Overseer Jay Evans, and it is a pleasure to be again on this podcast. Thank God for another opportunity to continue in the Word where we was at last Wednesday, God has spared my life again this Wednesday to be with you, and uh, I am pleased, and I thank God for those who are listening uh, live. I uh, thank God for tuning in with me. Uh, if you're here in Columbus and around Florida area, you know that uh, there is a hurricane coming in, and uh, we're expecting a lot to happen. Uh, but we pray, God, that uh, God will bless and God will see us through. We know what the um, meteorologist is saying, and we know that it's coming in. But um, praise God, we thank God that we have a certain, we have a God that never slumber our sleep. Doesn't mean that because uh, we are Christians and because we are God's holy people that we are going to go without being chastise or go without being trials or tribulation. But nevertheless, we still going to give God the praise and God the glory. Even in the midst of uh, all things work together for good for those who love God and was called according to his purpose. Amen. The Bible lets us know to offer up the sacrifice of praise when it's not convenient, when it's not 
things are going your way when it is a sacrifice. It lets us know also, uh, Paul says that, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The world is that what Jesus said, if the world hated me, it was also hate you. Praise God. So hatred is of the world. Amen. That just because a person is not saved, that person is not your enemy. They're only your enemy if they hate you. Jesus said that those who seek to kill me, those are the one that was uh, the religious leaders. Those are the one that was hating him. So uh, my thing, my belief is that you can deal with people that's not saved and they'll treat you real good. They'll treat you nice. Uh, you know, as long as you don't try to push this word down your throat uh, with loving kindness, have a drawn thee. If you love that person, Perhaps give an opportunity for a person to ask you a question. Why in the midst of all your trouble, all your trials, you still seem to be upbeat. And, and it's, that's an opportunity for you to witness about Jesus. But if you are complaining and you are murmuring just like them, they're not going to ask you why you the way you are because that's what the world was would be doing. So in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trials and Testing of faith, we are to uh, sh show forth Jesus and the love of God so that people would be drawn to us for the answers. And I believe Jesus, the people that was drawn to him is because he's compassionate, because his love, because his concern, that power. The Bible lets us know that there was no comeliness about it. He didn't, he wasn't a handsome guy like the, like the upper strand, uh, this white supremacist Jesus. I mean, he's, he's white, got long, pretty curly hair, and he's a handsome guy. That's not the Bible. Isaiah said he had no form of comeliness that we should behold him. He was despised and rejected. In other words, if you was around him, you could not put him out. You could not pull him out to being this gorgeous, handsome, built spectrum of an individual. No, no, no. What drew you to him was different than his appearance. Praise God. It's just like we think Samson was this incredible hawk. No, that would then give credit to his ability. But oh, I believe Samson was a small, puny man with supernatural strength from Almighty God. It, 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 oh my y'all, yo, don't you don't y'all stop me. Praise God. He, even Gilead said, I'm the least. My clan is the least among the, the children of Israel, and I'm the least of my clan. And you decide to choose me? Hey, but God showed him, look, and hey, I, 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 you got to show me something, God. Show me if, if dew is on the ground and, and not on the stone, you know, I believe you. And, well, if, if, if the other way around. If, if, if do is on the rock and not on the ground, you know, but finally God let him know, I'm with you. I am the one that's going to do this. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to do this. Praise God. Not because of your goodness. And the Bible lets us know God dealt with Israel not because of their greatness, but because they was least among the people. All the nations of the earth couldn't compare to your way with the children of Israel. Praise God. They conquered Canaan by the power of God. And God said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I don't change. So we can rest assured, if God be for us, who can be against us? Praise God. You can read Romans chapter 8, and and you can go from uh, 20, uh, 28 all the way up to the end, and you'll find nothing. Matter of fact, let me go over this uh, just a peep and peep with that just a little bit, just for your hearing. And I just want to <laughs> read, read some. Uh, let me tell you what I'm going to talk about tonight. Last week, I talked to you about the falling away. and But tonight, I'm going to talk to you about the great falling away from the faith. See, last week was falling away, but actually... 
It's falling away from the faith. That faith is in Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, uh, let's look at this particular passage of scriptures here uh, for your understanding. And Paul writes to the Romans, he said, And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and to those who are called according to what his purpose. For this we, for for he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the, oh, what a blessing, my God, my God, to be conformed. When is that going to take place? We are not conformed to God's, the image of God, dear son, at this time. But God sees us. Not as we see ourselves, but God sees us as he sees Jesus. Praise God. As he is, so shall we be. We're going to have a glorified body. Because it says here, for moreover, whom he predestined, those believers, those, these he, God, also called, whom he also called, these he also justified. Oh, man, let me go back up a little bit further to the 29th verse. That's that's where I should have been. For whom he foreknew, God knew, he knew, he foreknew us. He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that we might be the first, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Jesus is the firstborn, and there of the many brothers, we're going to be the second, whatever whatever your number, you're going to be in that number, praise the name of God. And you will be conformed to the image of Yeshua, Jesus, the glorified Savior, the King of glory. Hallelujah. Who is the King of glory? Mighty power and battle. God, God Almighty, praise the name of God. God in the flesh, reconcile man unto himself. Praise the name of God. What a blessing it is to know your destiny. Don't fall away from the faith. Keep the faith. Endure to the end. Praise God. Then you'll be saved. But you got to continue therein. There's a distraction to take you away from the faith. There's a diabolical devil to take you from the faith. Moreover, whom he predestined, those he also called, and whom he called, also justified. Made us righteous just as we never seen. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Where does glorification come? We're not glorified in our, look at our flesh. There's no good thing in this flesh. God speak things that be not as though they were. Praise the name of God. God sees us. Praise God in the glory. Also the glory, he also glorified. You are glorified as God sees you. What then shall we say to these things? What shall we say to these things? Is that's the truth? If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all. And how shall he, not with his son, freely give us all things? Praise the name. What we think about now. Oh God, let's get our minds off now. And get our minds on what God hath prepared us. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, have not entered the heart of man. The thing that God hath prepared for those who love him. The first commandment, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, strength, mind, and soul. Praise the name of God. And love your neighbors as yourself. Praise God. Oh, my, my, my. Freely give us all things. Who shall bring any charge to God's elect? If you are God's elect, who can bring a charge to you? Praise God. It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ who died. Furthermore, is also risen. Do you believe in the resurrection? Yes, the birth, the death, the burial. And the resurrection. That's the victory of the resurrection. Death have no power over you in Christ Jesus. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your power? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. 
Woo! Victory in Christ Jesus. Whom shall condemn us? It is Christ who died. And furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also make intercessory woo, for us? You have someone, the King of, King of Glory, praying for you. You can't help but be victorious. You can't help be. You can't help be conqueror. And I'll get to that conqueror in just a minute. Who shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? Shall tribulation? Hmm? Shall distress? Shall persecution. See these things are going to happen. But they will not separate you from God's love. Famines. Yes. Nakedness. Peril. Sword. As it is written. For your sake. We are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet. In all these things. We are more than conquerors through him. Who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, don't you fear death, life, Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection of the life. Him that alive and believes in me should never die. And him that is dead that believes in me shall live again. Praise the name of the Lord. Hey, you can read that over in John chapter 1, I mean chapter 11. But the, the Christ come and raise Lazarus from the dead. Because he is the resurrection of and the life. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present or things to come, doesn't matter, for height, nor death, nor any other creation, created things, shall be able to separate us, whoo, them that believe it, from the love of God, which is in Christ. This love is in Christ. And if you be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Whoa. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the praise. I'm going to read this particular passage of scripture in my lesson. Uh, come from Jude, uh, know, one chapter, one chapter there, and I'm going to read down to verse one, from verse one down to I believe verse number three, and I'm going to read one just, but the, where I'm coming from is verse three, and that, that will uh, that will tie in with my title, and that title is the great falling away from the faith. It says here, Jude, Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Now, Jude was the half brother of, of, of James and Jesus. Okay, it says again, Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. That's the one who wrote the book of James. Praise God. The brother, this was the half brother of Jesus. When you look at Jude, when you look at Jude, uh, you, you'll find that they are related here with the Lord. When you read the uh, uh, in index about about Jude, who this who this person was, Jude, the servant of the Lord and the brother of James, praise in the name of God. It goes on to say, to those who <laughs> yes, sir, listen to what he's saying now. Amen. I tell you, you Jesus Christ is the way, right? Truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Him. To those who are called, my God, my God, that's what we just read, by the call into the family of God. You must be called by the Holy Spirit. You can't come no other way. If you're a thief and a robber, if you don't come through the door, Jesus is the door. The Holy Spirit guides you to the door that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the one. To whom, to, to, those, to, to those whom are called, sanctified by God the Father, and preserved, whoo, good God Almighty, preserved in Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace, and love be what? Multiply to you. We want multiplication, right? We're going to multiplicate mercy, we're going to multiplicate peace, and we're going to multiplicate love. You can have abundance of love, and abundance of peace, and abundance Abundance of mercy. That mercy is grace. Oh my God. Grace. Hmm. God 
Riches at Christ's Expense, the acronym GRACE. Now, this is the one I'm going to get to. Beloved, oh, he's talking to somebody now. He's talking to the believers. Beloved, while well, I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. I find it necessary to write to you and to exhorting you to what? To contend earnestly for the faith, which you was once for all delivered to you, to the saints. Other words, the, the question here, are you continuing in the faith? You got to contend in the faith. You can't stop it. Without faith, you cannot please God. For now, faith is the substance of things. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And when your faith is tried, you have to go through and be tested. Your faith will be tested. But when your faith is tested, it brings forth long suffering. It brings forth patience. And patience will have its complete work in you. Wanting nothing. Because you are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. His faith was tested. The apostles' faith was tested. And if you're in this world, praise God, in Christ, your faith will be tested. It's a lie for those who say to you that once you become a Christian, your, your worries is over. You're not going to have anything to worry about. You're going to be in perfect peace. Yes, if they're thinking about the end result. But while you're going on this pilgrim journey... You're going to run through some trouble. You're going to run through some potholes. You're going to run through some ups and downs. There are going to be some valleys and there are going to be some hills. So in this work, in this life, if you think you have hope only in this life, you are men most miserable. So let me go. Uh, I, I covered some things last week. and I'm going I'm to read a few uh, this week. And we talked about apostasy because apostasy is someone that have stopped. Their faith, they, uh, their faith has been shattered. Their faith have been shipwrecked. Their faith have been uh, com have been turned around, and now their faith is in something other than the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Their faith now is in something completely different. They have gotten off base. And I'm here to tell you, I want you to get on base tonight because there's false prophets out there. They don't mean, they, and some of them don't even realize they're teaching false doctrine, but they think that's a good gospel. They think that it's, it's on TV, it's the evangelists out there, it's some of the pastors who think they are in a right relationship. But when you think, take heed, when you think you stand, lest you fall, you need to examine the word of God for yourself. Be diligent in the word of God. Let me tell you something. I done been there. I done seen it, praise the name of God. And I'd rather just study the word of God myself, lock myself in my room, don't have to hear what nobody that's going to say, but dig in the scripture for myself, praise the name of God. Because there's folks out there, they are living a hip, hypocrisy life, a life of being a hypocrite. They uh, dress the in fine clothing. They are sound like they're real, real good. They are very elegant in their speaking. They they moan real good. They make you feel good. They make hair on your arm stand up because they're speaking so well. But inside, they are dead man bone. But you, won't, you don't see that. All you see is what you want to see. And you want to hear what you want to hear. So I'm going to get into the scriptures in uh, second. Thessalonians chapter 2. I talked to you last week about that, and I didn't get into that particular one, but I hope to do it today. But I'm going to read some of this right here. It says, Let no one in any way deceive you. I guess this is the uh, NASB. A National American Standard Bible. I guess that's what it means. Oh, no. That's new. American Standard Bible. N-A-S-B. Yeah, that's what that is. This is the translation here. But I'm going to have the New King James translation. But anyway, let no one who, if you, see, if you let them, you're going to mess up. Let, 
That means you give them access to your knowledge. That means you give them access to your brain to feed you stuff that might not be in line with the Bible. Let no one in any way deceive you. For if Jesus returned about the coming of the Lord, will not come unless the apostasy come first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Let me tell you something. We are looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those believe in the rapture of the church. Paul tells us that in the last days, He's, he, now, Paul says this, that the dead in Christ, matter of fact, let's, let me show you what we are looking, what, before this happened, and before, the other words, the first coming, let's go look at it. Paul says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 4, and because the Thessalonians had thought they had missed the rapture. And and somebody had told them they had missed it. And Paul began to let them know that's the case. In the verse 13, says, but I say, but I do not want you to be ignorant, unlearned brethren, concerning those who are dead, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died, and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who are dead in Jesus. For it says asleep, but I just put the dead in because that's what it meant. For this very for for this we say, the apostles now, to you, by the word of the Lord, by what? The word of the Lord. Paul had revelation, didn't he? That we who are alive. And remain. See, there's a faith remaining. You got to remain and contend in the faith until the coming of the Lord will by no means perceive those who are dead. For the Lord Himself, who? The Lord Himself will descend from heaven and with the shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now, let me tell you something. This is a, this is a key verse right here. Therefore. Huh? He said, now, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Paul, Paul said again, I want you to be comfort to let you know he's coming again. That's the rapture of the church. Before the tribulation period, those who have a pre-tribulation view. But they got all kinds of views that the church will go in the middle of the tribulation, before the tribulation, after the tribulation, see, there are many views there. I have to believe a pre-millennium kingdom that the rapture of the church takes place, the pre-rapture, uh, and then the tribulation, a pre-tribulation. The church go up, the tribulation start seven years after the second coming of Christ to establish his kingdom that he told Israel, the Jewish people, they say, would you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The kingdom will be restored to Israel and all the believers after the tribulation when he comes the second time. So, he is actually saying in this particular chapter that I read to you, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3, he was saying before the rapture, before the coming of the Lord, there will be a great falling away from the faith. That's a great sign. Israel, yes. But for the church age, 
when you find a lot of people who are turning away from the faith, that's the t- a tell a tell say a time that the coming of Jesus is closer than when you think. That's the apostasy that Paul is writing about. Now you have to understand. You think. And, and see, in, in, in America, they want America now to be a, like a Christian nation. Uh, you know, they, they want you to, they want you to uh, dominate, the Christians to dominate America. Well, that, that's what the Christian nationalists believe and think, that America is a Christian nation and America should be dominated and ran by Christians. Well, let me look at this. Freedom of religion is one of the five freedom of guarantee of the First Amendment. It is the government can't say the government can't require or favor any one religion, and it protects the right to live by your own religious belief or none at all. That's what the First Amendment, and we, see, people want to say the First Amendment is for Christians. No, it's not. It's for anybody that can believe. You can believe in a rock. You can believe in Satan, witchcraft, whatever. That's the freedom of religion in the First Amendment. But the white, the, the Christian nationalists is want to convert this nation, like a Christian nation, and it want to dominate Everything. That's a conservative view. Want to dominate everything. And and look here, I'm a Christian. But at the same time, I can't force my conviction on you. I can't force my religion on you. I can't force you to worship Jesus Christ and the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I can just tell you, I can't hate you. Because of that. There are people that will hate you because you have different views. Because you have different spiritual views. Islam or whatever. Christian nationalists. If you don't believe in America as a Christian nation and you, you don't believe in the conservative views and, and you don't believe America is a special ordained company, a country ordained by God and America is great. They don't like you. And that's not God. See, that's not of God. They are, see, with the Christian nationalists, they are no clear, clear title definition of Christian nationalists. I'm reading, I'm reading. Since it is not a form of Christian a religion, denomination or sect, which a standard doctrine or belief, nor is there any single person or council leading Christian nationalists. That oversee the followers. Generally, religious scholars and others who study Christian nationalism describe it as a belief that the United States is a country defined by Christianity. And in practice, this means the government should take steps to keep the country Christian rooted and Identify intact. Okay, that means what? That what that mean? That mean we don't care about nobody else. We you just like an Islamic nation. Anybody believe you? You want to kill them out? That's what would happen. The government should advocate Christian values and pass laws and interact policies that reflect these values. Mm hmm. That separate church and state is not a uh, fundamental law that should be followed. God's plan for you, from the God's plan is for the United States to be a successful nation based on Christians' ideal. That's Christian nationalists. They believe in America, 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 guns, guns, and sometimes themselves. And God some way, way behind. Let me tell you something. I, I, I believe everybody have a right to believe what they want to believe. I did. 
for 26 years. I believe what I want to believe until the Spirit of God changed my life. So if you change your life just because somebody else say that you should and God is not calling you, you're not a Christian. God must call you by the Spirit of God. You can't join this religion by a church, by, by classifying yourself a, a Christian a, a nationalist. You can't do that. It must be called, you must be called by God to join the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Apostasy means to fall away from the truth. That's what it means. To fall away from the truth. Therefore, an apostate is someone who has once believed, then reject the truth. See, the devil is after the truth. It's not your truth. It's God's truth. You can't say that. What is your truth? That sounds pretty heavy, doesn't it? You have no truth. Your truth is a lie. It's only one truth. God is the truth. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. That's what Jesus says. Now, now, let, let, let me let me go over here. I believe this is I believe this particular path. See, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I think it's in John seventeen and seventeen. Let's run over there just a minute. I, I believe the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, that I'm done. Let me, let me get it. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yep. Okay. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. That's St. John chapters 4, 17 and 17. So your truth is not God's truth. Huh? He said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. For they do not, for they are not of the world, but as, but just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them, set them aside, separate them. How? Through your truth. Your word is truth. So not your word, your people are like, oh, that's your truth. I, I heard Michelle Obama say, that's your truth. And it sounds, uh, Oprah Winfrey, oh, that's your truth. A person with a, a, a gender identity, oh, that's your truth. You're right, that's your truth, and it's not God's truth. And if it's not God's truth, it is a lie. No? If, it's, if it's not the truth, what is it? What is the opposite of truth? Uh, huh? Ask that question. What is the opposite of truth? It's a lie. Okay. You got that right. I didn't say that. You said it if you answered the question. I know you're probably going to manipulate that a little bit and, and say something other than the truth. Apostasy is rebellious against God because it is rebellious against the truth. It's the rebellion against the truth. In the Old Testament, God warned the Jewish people about the past, about idolatry and their lack of trusting him. In the New Testament, the epistles warn us about the falling away from the truth. The apostate is a very real and a dangerous threat to the believers. Hmm? To be apostate, that is associating with the appearance of the Antichrist. That's what it is. If you are apostate, you, you have that spirit of the Antichrist. Most Christians are looking for the arrival of the Antichrist, but very few of the Christians are looking for the apostate that must come first before the Antichrist can be revealed. All right. Let's look at my scriptures here. All right. First, second, uh, second Thessalonians chapter 2. And I guess I will read, start at 2. Paul writes, second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning 
the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gathering together of him, we ask you not to be soon, ta- not to be so sh- soon taken in mind and trouble either by your spirit or by words or by letter. See, somebody had wrote a letter and had got the people all upset and stirred because they had some false teachers. And Apostle Paul is telling them, I did not write this letter. It didn't come from me. It says, look here. It says, not to be soon shaken in your mind and trouble, either by your by spirit, mm-hmm, or by words or letter, as if from us. <laughs> See that spirit and and that 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 word and the letter. Paul said it didn't come from me. It come from another source. It did not come from us as though the day of Christ had already come. We didn't say that. Paul said, I, and somebody told you that, but I didn't tell you that. Let no man, now let no one deceive you by any means. For the day will not come unless the falling away, the apostate, apostate, that rebellious, falling from the faith, comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, whom oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he sitteth as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That comes from Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. So the man of sin can't be revealed. And Paul going to go on about the man of sin. And I'm going to read it all. And then we'll go back. See, now Paul says there will be a falling away first. The apostasy. People will, have, will fall from the faith. That will, that's the sign before the Antichrist is revealed. The man of sin. The son of perdition. Whom the Lord will consume with the brightness of his coming and his glory. Who will put a, set up himself in the temple of God, calling himself that he is God, making himself equal to God. This is the Antichrist. This is the prince of the air that will someone will come and his spirit is in the world today. Many spirits of the Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist is denying that Jesus, that it, that God was incarnated in Christ. That means God became a man through Jesus Christ to reconcile the world to Himself. If you don't believe that, John said you have the spirit of the Antichrist. If you do not believe that Jesus is God incarnated in human form, you are. Have, you have the spirit of the Antichrist. You can read First John chapter and find that out. Okay. It says many Antichrists are here who deny that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, you, you might say, well, I believe he's the Son of God, but I don't believe he's God. Well, you can't. You, you, no, you can't. You can't. There's only one God. Here, O Israel, the God, Lord God is one. That Jesus of Nazareth God became flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit, impregnated Mary, and he grew up. This was God. That's why he said, the Son of God, the Son of fully God, and fully man. That's why he was able to redeem us. Nobody else could. God took matters in his own hand to redeem you and I. No man could have done that. God did it himself. Remember Abraham. When God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, Genesis chapter 18. So Abraham, take these animals, cut them in half, lay them aside. The, 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 the birds don't lay them aside. And when the vultures came 
Abraham drew, drove them away. And then Abraham fell asleep. God himself walked through death through the, and made a covenant with Abraham. Abraham was asleep. God did it himself to indicate I'm going to redeem man myself. Jesus of Nazareth is God in the flesh. Now you, you, I want you to study that now. Okay. I want you to study it. Well, anyway, all right. Now, do you remember, Paul says in fifth, fifth verse, that when I was yet still with you, I told you these things, and now you know who restrained that it may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now let will let until he be taken out of the way. And then the lawless one, one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the brightness of his glory. Revelation chapter 19 verse 20. That Christ will destroy this Antichrist with the brightness of his glory, his coming, his second coming. And the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish. There are going to be some perishing there are going to be some perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth. They did not continue in the truth. They followed after apostasy. They followed after the wrong doctrine. And they, that they might be saved. They started out, but they did not continue. That they all may be damned who did not believe the truth. You don't believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Whoa, my, my, my. Uh, now, 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 uh, let me read the. 11th verse, I think that 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. Uh, for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And that they will meet condemn who did not believe the truth. Otherwise, God will send them Strong delusion that they will believe a lie rather than the truth. All right. Let's, let's dissect that a little bit, my brothers and sisters. God sent us, sent upon them a misleading. That's what the word strong delusion means. God, God sends upon them. Who, who God sends upon them strong a, a, a misleading influence and working of error and an, a strong delusion to make them believe what is false, a lie. God will cause them to be greatly deceived and they will believe these lies. There was a person in the United States that every time he opened his mouth, he tells a lie. And all the people that followed him believed the lie. You keep telling, and he says this, if you keep telling a lie long enough, people will start to believe you. That's a deceptive spirit. 
And you know who this person is. He's running for re-election. Here, here in the United States. And it's a lie. Hmm? God will cause them to greatly be deceived and they will believe a lie. Well, I want to go back to the old books of the Bible in 1 Kings. I want to take my time here because I want to make sure you understand I want to stay with the Bible. 1 Kings chapter 22. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 22 and uh, verse 19. 22 verse 19. This incident here, Micaiah. Then Micaiah said, therefore, in other words, Ahab wanted to go up to Magillion and along with the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, to attack. And, and, and his prophet said, go up and you will be successful and and Jehoshaphat was smart enough to say, is there any prophet from Israel? And they said, well, one, Micaiah, he never prophesied anything good. And, and, and then he said here in verse number 16, I'll read 16. So, so the king said to him, how many times shall I, in other words, his, they, he was saying what they had said. But King Ahab said, how long, how many times I said to you, and, and swore that you should tell me nothing but the truth. Hmm. See, the truth sets you free. In the name of, no, no, see, he, he basically said, I want you to tell me the truth now in the name of Yahweh. That, that's, 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 in other words, now whatever I say to you got to be online with Yahweh. So people will tell a lie in Jesus. They, they would use God's name to tell a lie. You better be careful. You don't know who you're playing with. God, 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 you better be careful. You lying in God's name. Well, it says, say, say, look at here. But the truth is in the name of Yahweh. Then he said, I, now he, <laughs> let me read that one more time because I, 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 I tell you, this is so good. This is Second Kings, uh, yeah, First Kings, chapter 20, uh, 20, uh, 22, and I, I'm reading verse sixteen. So the king said to him, "How many times shall I make you swear huh, that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord Yahweh?" Then he said, Micaiah, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that had no shepherd. And Yahweh said, these have no masters. Let each return to his own house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would prophesy no good thing but all evil? Then, uh, then Micaiah says, watch this. God sent them strong delusion that they will believe a lie rather than the truth. So you better be very careful on the lies that you believe because God has sent a strong delusion that you will believe a lie. You're going to believe this individual. If you believe a lie, God warned you. God will warn you. And now he's warning you here. Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw all Israel scattered. And I just read that scattered. Uh, say, well, no, let me back up a minute. Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. And all the hosts of heaven standing by on the right hand and on his left. And the Lord Yahweh said, who will persuade Al to go up that he may fall at Remangelion? 
So one spoke in this manner and another spoke in this manner. Then the spirit came forth and stood before Yahweh and said, I will persuade Ahab. Yahweh said, in what way? He said, I will go out and be a lying, what? A lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. And Yahweh said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go and do so. Therefore, the Lord, therefore, look, the Lord had put a lion spirit in the mouth of those prophets of yours, and Yahweh had declared disasters against you. A lion spirit. God. You might say, well, this guy lying. Uh-uh. I believe there's a lying spirit in him. I, I, he can't help himself. There's a lying spirit has been dispatched in his mind. And all the ones who are hearing this is prophets of Baal. Is prophets of Ahab. Ahab. And it was 850 of them. Not only the ministers, but all those who follow these lies. You are under the influence of a spirit. I know that's heavy, isn't it? I, 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 I'm telling you what, this is unfolding before me as I read in these scriptures. This is unfolding in my eyesight. This is unfolding for me. Let, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 19 so that you understand even more in chapter 19. And verse 5. 2 Kings chapter 19 and verse 5. So the servant of King Hezekiah came into Isaiah. And Isaiah said to them, Though you shall not, you shall say to your master, in other words, the king, the king uh, Hezekiah sent a message to the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah is going to tell this messenger what to tell the king. He said, so you, your, your master, tell your master, thus saith the Lord, do not fear of the words which you have heard which came from the servant of the king of Assyria, has blasphemed me. Surely I will sin. Oh, look here. This is what Isaiah is saying. God is speaking. Surely I will sin a spirit upon him, king of Syria. He shall hear a rumor. What is a rumor? It's a lie. And return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Who, who, who? God, Isaiah. God said, I will send, he will hear an error, because I'm going to make sure he hear a rumor. And a rumor is a lie. It's not the truth. Well, let's go to chapter, let's go stay in the same Chapter 19 and verse 10. Thus you shall speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, do not let. This is this is what that joker is saying. This is what this king of Assyria is saying to God's man. If God is on your side, fear no liar, fear no cheater. Feel no corrupt person. I don't care who is the president. If they're corrupt, it's a spirit that's controlling them. Pray that somebody will get saved. That be delivered from the lying spirits that's been set out 
in this nation. And they are in this nation. Lying spirits. All right. This is what the king of Assyria is saying. Thus you shall speak to uh, Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you. Listen to this arrogant person. Jerusalem shall not be given into the hands should Jerusalem not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria? Because your God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is deceiving you. That's what he says. Look. He said, now look. Look at the voting. You're looking at the voting polls. You're looking at all the stuff. You're looking at all the ads. You're looking at all the stuff. And now, this is what this arrogant leader is saying. Look. You heard what the king of Assyria, you hear what I have done in all the land to utterly destroy them and shall, and shall you be delivered? Have gods of the nation delivered them, those who my father, this is the messenger, this king of Assyria is saying, he, basically, uh, this is the messenger have de destroyed. No one, he says, can withstand my power. No one can withstand me. But when God gets involved, it's a different situation. Where is the king of all these kings, he said, I conquered. And Hezekiah receiving the letter and heard of the messenger and read it. And Hezekiah went into the house of the Lord and spread himself before Yahweh. Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. And Hezekiah said, O Lord God of Israel, the one who delivered, the one who dwelt between the cherubims, you are God and alone of all the other kingdoms of the earth. You have made the heavens and the earth. Come on, let's pray about God. Let's honor him and tell him who he is. In Incline your ear, O Lord, Yahweh, unto my hearing. Open up your eyes, O Lord, Yahweh, and see and hear the words of the king of Assyria, which he had sent to me, and he's a reproach for the living God. Truly, Yahweh God, the king of Assyria had laid waste the nations, yes, so he have done that, and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire. They have not they were not gods, but the work of man's hands, wood, stone. Therefore, they destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord, Yahweh, our God, I pray to save us from his hands. And all the kingdoms of the earth shall know that you are the God and you alone. Now, 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 and, and then this verse here says, Then Isaiah the son of Ammon sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, because you have prayed. You have prayed. If we pray, let's believe. If you don't believe, don't pray. But believe and pray. Say, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel. Because you have prayed to me again, the king of Assyria, you have prayed against this king, I have heard you. God had already gave him his destiny and told him that he is going to die. Uh, now let's go back a little bit further. Same chapter, the 20, uh, the 32nd chapter of a verse. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor built a siege upon it again. By the way that, the, that he came, by the same way he shall return. He shall not come into this city, 
saith Yahweh, for I will defend this city. To save it, God is going to defend the church, not America, not, not Russia, not uh, all the other nations. God is not going to defend a nation but Israel. He's going to defend Israel, but all these other, other nations, these other Gentile nations. No, God is going to save the people outside in the, church, in, in the uh, nation if you come to Jesus. But he is saying, I will defend this city. Israel, Jerusalem to save it from the hand, from his own sake and for my servant David's sake. Oh, Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lord God, he, 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 he's, he's promising that he, he's going to hold his church. He's going to keep the body of Christ, the son of David, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hmm? Yeah, 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 he, that's, that, that's the one. Say it again. Uh, for I will defend. Okay, let me go further. Let me go further. And I and it came to pass on a certain night that the angel, oh my God, and the angel of the Lord killed in the camp of Assyria 185,000. Who did it? The angel, not angels plural, but angel as one killed 185,000 Assyrians. Whoa, my God, God is awesome. Let's be encouraged tonight, family members in the body of Christ. And when the people arose early in the morning, there were cockroaches all dead. And the king of Assyria departed and went away, returned home, and remained in Nineveh. Now it came to pass as he was worshiping in the temple. His God, that his sons, struck him down with a sword and they escaped. Let me tell you something. Don't mess with God. Don't mess with God. Don't The secret service can't stop the hand of God. No power can stop the hand of God. No special agent can stop the hand of God. When God said it is finished, it's finished. When God said it's over, oh, it's over. Don't touch him. Well, uh, let me let me go say a little further here. Uh, that that was a good read, wasn't it? <laughs> I I tell you what, I, I, whoa, my, I'm sweating pretty good here. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna be with you in a little bit. <laughs> uh, First uh, Timothy chapter one and verse eighteen. Uh, it says, "This charge I co- commit to you, O son Timothy." Concerning the prophecy uh, previously made concerning you, that by them you made concern, you made concern concerning you that you that they made made by them you made. In other words, he, he let you know what I've told you, Timothy. I want you to remember those things concerning you that by them. You may wage a good, a good warfare. And that warfare is a faith warfare. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected. What rejected what? The faith concerning the faith. And has suffered shipwreck. In other words, their faith is shipwrecked. Well, let's go over a little bit further to uh, chapter six. Uh, second, I think this is second. This is the last. This is the last one. Second Timothy, I believe it's. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, matter of fact, it's First Timothy uh, chapter 6 and 12. I'll read verse 11. But you, old man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Fight, uh oh, the good fight of faith. You got what? To stay in faith, you got to fight the good fight. You got to hear the word of God and not believe every spirit, but try the spirit by the spirit and see the of God. How you try the spirit? By the word of God. Don't believe everything somebody tell you. And he's talking about the spirit is a false prophet, it's a false preacher, it's a false message. And you ain't trying it. You're not facts finding. You're not researching to see whether it's a lie or whether it's the truth. Faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. See, you got to lay hold. To that which you have also called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witness. Now, 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 let me go over here. What Paul says. Paul says this. For I am already being poured out. Second Timothy chapter four. Verse number six. For I already been poured out. As a drink offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight and I have, let, have finished my course. I have what? Kept the faith. Earnestly, the faith that, he's, that he talked about, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord, that uh, salvation come only through the grace of God through faith. It's not a works, lest any man should boast. No matter what you do, finally have finished my race. I have kept the faith. And I'm going to stop back there because you know it said, uh, now, finally, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, he's not an evil judge, not a crooked judge, he's not a crooked Supreme Court judge, not a crooked uh, federal judge, not a crooked president, not a crooked candidate, but he, 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 what? The righteous judge will give me at that day, but not only to me only, but all those who love the Lord appearance. Contend the strive a battle that the faithful believer must fight in the defense of the faith. It means literally to struggle, to suffer, be under great stress or fight a fight. Are you fighting your faith? Are you fighting to stay in faith? Huh? Fight the good fight. Well, I'm going to put close this Bible. I got some notes here I'm going to share with you. See, what's going to cause the problem is someone not only. We know that God sent lying spirits in the mouth of people, the mouths of kings, the mouth, uh, mouth of prophets, the mouth of leaders. And so the liars that's going out, it's a spirit. <laughs> it's a spirit. And the people, the foolish people, he said, do not be deceived. But you're doing something he told you not to do. You're being deceived by this lying spirit. But he's warning you. And if you hear my voice tonight, I'm, I'm warning you. Don't believe the lying spirit. Because, again, Christians, evangelicals. Now, when you start talking about evangelicals, you're mostly talking about the white church. Uh, let, me, let me see something here. Uh, some, some statistics here 
for for our, uh, yeah. Uh, by white nationalists says people who say that the founders intended for the United States to be a Christian nation. White evangelicals have eighty one percent. All Christians ninety. Uh, 69%, all adults 60%. People who say the United States should should be a Christian nation now, white evangelicals said 81%, all Christians 62%, all Americans 45%. Who believe, who, people who have not heard or read anything about white nationalists White evangelicals, 57% say they never heard of it. All Christian, 59% never heard of it. All Americans, 59, 40, 40, I never heard of it. See, what you never heard is dangerous. That's why people don't want you to know nothing. Because you can't correct nothing if you don't know nothing. People who have a favorable, virgin, unfavorable or a view of white nationalists, a Christian, a Christian nationalist, all Americans, adults, 5% versus 24%. All Christians, 7% versus 15%. White evangelicals, 19% versus 12%. People who are up here to be sympathetic with Christian nationalists. All Americans, 30%. White evangelicals, 66%. Hispanic, Protestant, 55%. Black Protestant, 39%. Latter race, Latter Day Saints, forty three, forty two percent. White Catholic, thirty one percent. Historic uh, Hispanic Catholics, thirty five percent. But I like that white evangelical, eighty five percent. They go along with them. That's scary. Let me tell you something. And again, there's some. Uh, evangelicals that do believe in conservative view. Well, I, real, 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 real conservative view. I believe in real conservative reviews. I, I, real. But the conservative view that you see now is not the conservative view that I was that I voted for earlier. That I that I believe in. I don't believe in this conservative view they got going on now. I believe when eventually, when they can get rid of some of this stuff and craziness they got and get some people in office that have a real, genuine, conservative view, you got my vote. But until then, I can't vote for you. I just, just, just can't do it because there's too much corruption. There's too much division. There's too much hatred. Can't do it. So, so evangelical, you, you, need to, you, need to, you need to look at the Bible. Because there are churches that's preaching if you're not a Trumpite uh, uh, voting for this, you're not, you're not even saved. Well, I don't know what they call being saved. I don't think, if I read in my Bible that I had to be a conservative, uh, be a uh, make American great again uh, to be a Christian. That's not a criteria. It may be for you. And that means you ain't saved. That means you're going to lift your eyes up in hell because you're not saved. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. That's how you distort the gospel. Distort the gospel is a message of salvation that change, remove, or replace key components of the gospel as outlined in the Bible. Some example of distorting the gospel is uh, legalistic. Legalistic is based on a viewpoint that in order for a ruler to maintain order in society, the people must obey a set of strict laws. That sounds like dictatorship. And these are the off and, 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 and the authority. Even some preachers have that kind of mentality and pastors the bible says the belief that people can earn salvation by obeying god's law or doing good works this is contrary to the idea 
that salvation is achieved through faith in Jesus Christ and the grace of God. Uh, legalist, legalist, this, this is L I D E R T I N S I I S M. The belief that a person don't need to live a holy and a holy life because they are saved by grace. That person saying, "Look here, since I've been saved by grace, I can do what I want to do. I don't have to. Fo- I don't have to follow the you know doing the others as they, I have the, the golden rule. I I don't have to love nobody because I'm saved by grace, and and I and I'm good. I can do what I want now. That's a lie." That's somebody that's starting the gospel. Now, this is a good one here. The health and wealth gospel. It's a distortion. Listen to this, what it says. That believe, the belief that people can come to Christ and receive wealth, health, and prosperity. That's what they preach. And you know that's a lot of preachers. A lot of preachers now preaching Prosperity. That's distortion of the gospel. Beware. It's a great falling away from the faith. See, there's so many ways to fall away from the faith. That's dangerous. Dangerous. Y'all better listen to me, okay? This is serious. Your life depends on your choices. Expressing express, ex, excessive Individualism, the belief that Christianity is about being true to yourself, following your heart, and living your 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 uh, authentic self. That's a lie. I said it before. Your truth is not God's truth. Your truth may be that you feel something that you weren't mo- you weren't born to be. That's your truth. But the truth that God made them male and female, that's the truth. All right. A optional Jesus. The belief that Jesus is a way. The Bible says he is the he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by him. But this optional Jesus. Is a belief that Jesus is a way to God, but not the only way to God. That's false. Now, uh, Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter one. Let me turn over there. And verse six. All right, there we go. I wasn't planning on being here as long as I am, but I tell you what. It, this is a, this is a, this is a, I, it's a, it's a, it's a rude awakening, and I pray that everybody that that uh, that I sent this out listen to this message because it's a serious, it's it's serious. Uh, it says here, Paul said, "I marvel that you are turned away so soon from Him who have called you in the grace of Christ to another gospel." If, if uh, Galatians talk about it, 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 it talks all about that. You you so soon salvation by works. Again, this is another extorting the gospel. Salvation by works. The idea that salvation is achieved through works rather than by grace. Christianity based on action. That that the idea that Christianity is based on what people do before God. Instead of trusting God in his mercy, you got to do something. You got to pray a certain way. You got to read your Bible a certain way. Because if you didn't, you're not saved. And if you don't go to church, you're not saved. There's a whole lot of things that people add to salvation. Yes, you should go to church. Yes, you should pray. Yes, you should read your Bible. But it's not a prerequisite. Don't you get me wrong. It's not based on what you do. For your salvation. Your Christianity is not based on your action. Prosperity Jesus. This is a prosperity. I talk about it. the idea that Jesus guarantees you happiness, health, 
living without trouble for his followers. That's not true. Every follower of Messiah suffered and died. You're not going to get away. But your end results is greater than your beginning of what God has for you. Faith and, that was faith and, the idea that faith and something else is enough to save someone. See, in other words, faith ain't enough. Faith, the idea that faith and something else is enough to save you. In other words, you got faith and you got works. That's enough to save you. Not the grace. Grace nullified then. You, now that's, you, you are saying, I don't need grace. And you don't need grace. You cannot keep the law. You cannot do nothing to please God. The only thing you can please God is accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Faith so. The idea that Jesus is perfection and righteous. So that people can live however they want to live. In other words, I told Jesus is up. He done did it. So now I can just do it. I can live where I want to live. Well, anyway, I'm finished my message tonight. And I thank God I've said something to help you. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by him. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's not a hard thing to do. Just believe in God. Believe also. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go into the prayer place with you. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come and receive you unto myself. That where I am, you may be also. That's, that's, that's the answer. Trust in God with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. Trust also in him. Huh? Admit the fact that you are a sinner. And if you're still going down telling lies, there's a spirit of, there's a lying spirit upon you. That's dangerous. And if you don't change, your heart is going to be hard and you, you God going to give you over to a reprobated mind, a mind void of judgment. And I believe there's a lot of people today who lied so much until they believe the lie. And there's no hope for them. I didn't say that. You might still have hope. That, that, that's between you and God. But if you keep going on the way you're going and keep lying, in hell, you're going to lift up your eyes. Anyway, I'm getting ready to get out of here and I'm going to see you guys on the next end. You guys be blessed and I'll see you next week. Yes, Jesus, I'm praying that this song impresses you for all that you did for me. I just want to get next to you and I seen the way that you took the cross for me. You took my sins, you got up there and you took the loss for me. And I just want to thank you with every little bit in me. I mean it. I ain't just blowing smoke like a chimney. I have no life without you. I trust you. I'll never doubt you. You showed me your grace and mercy. God, you're beyond worthy of all the praise and worship. God, I'm needing you. I'm begging. Yes, I'm pleasing you i'm praying that i'm pleasing you i just want to serve you yes in any way i can for jesus i only stand see me as a righteous man of god so please our bar god cleanse me of everything that's not like you i want to be just like you my daddy this world ain't got nothing to offer me you satisfy me i surrender fully i give you all of me yes jesus you my everything you save me and erase my pain jesus you're my Christ, you're my everything, yes. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my I'm like a word in a dictionary when I say that I love you cause I mean that you are my father you taught me how to walk on water in the midst of the storms knowing that I can't be bothered because your love is holding me keeping me molding me perfecting me the Holy Spirit he brings out the best in me yes you erase the stress and all the pain in me erase the fornicating and all the sin you made the change in me Jesus I never knew the power of the love you have saving me maturing my brother saving my mom and dad without you there's no way that i'm making it you built this regardless of the test lord i'm taking it 
you are my shining light. You gave me the gift of Jesus Christ through him. Yes, you bless me with eternal life. Yes, eternal life. So with eternal life, it keeps me at peace, even if it's meant for me to die tonight. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my Jesus Christ, you're my everything, yes. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my everything. You are my everything. Yes, I remember that. That day you saved me. You heard my cry in the bed. You rocked me like a baby. It was August the 28th at 229 in the morning on the school campus in the dorm and I couldn't hold that weight that was upon me but see you came and got next to me you came and you rescued me my savior my lord jesus christ it feels so right having you as my tissue whenever there's some tears to wipe you turn my dark to bright you change my wrong to right our relationships deeper than spandex